Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who aren't aware, I have a series on my channel where I talk about the books that DCOMs are based off of because if you didn't know, a lot of DCOMs are based off of books and I know I've only done two videos so far in this series but I was watching Aquamarine a few days ago with my friend Jackie and I saw that it was based off of a book. I am aware that Aquamarine is not a DCOM but I've never seen anyone compare the book to the movie before and so I wanted to give it a shot and so that's what we're doing today. So I ordered the book on Amazon, it came in a few days later and when it came in, I was very surprised to see that it looked like this. It is tiny. It's like less than 100 pages. I think only six chapters and the print is huge. It's like it took me like an hour to read this. I don't know if you'll be able to tell from where the camera is but I don't feel like moving. Um, just take my word for the fact that this print is tiny. I mean big. <laughs> I guess I expect that because it is a children's book but so far the other two books I've read that are adapted into DCOMs have been young adult novels and so this one was clearly a children's book which I'm not complaining about. I just it took me by surprise. So for these comparison videos I usually have a couple sections where I can do like a full analysis of the book versus the movie but for this video I'm just gonna do two sections one for characters and one for the main plot points in the book that they changed or left out because literally everything else in the movie is movie only. Like they had to make like a full-length feature out of this and so I understand why there are so many things that were added in the movie to make it better and stuff. I feel like I should say like just in disclaimer like the book is very different from the film. If you're gonna read it like if you're like hmm, maybe I'll stop here and like go read the book and then come back if it is such a quick read. Um, I don't really recommend it. It wasn't a good book. I didn't really like it very much. But I'm also not the target demographic. I'm not 12. I'm 22 and so maybe that's why I didn't like it but also I just thought it was kind of dumb and I would just recommend watching the movie instead. So first of all, the book does follow the same two best friends, Haley and Claire. I don't think that they're ever described like appearance wise. I'm not too sure it's ever said what they look like besides the fact that they are 12. So I think that that is a little bit younger than the girls are in the movie. They're also neighbors and Claire is the one who's moving, not Haley. So Claire and her grandparents are moving to Florida in a couple days and her parents did die as well in the book, but from a car accident, not from drowning. But Claire is still scared of water in the book and it's not really explained why. There's like one line and it says um, that she's just skittish of things that bring other girls joy so not too sure what that's about but I definitely think that was a good change in the movie to have it be like her parents drowned and that's why she's afraid of water it kind of ties everything together unlike in the book it just kind of seemed odd that she had this irrational fear but I mean people can be scared of water so that's fine but yeah <laughs> And then Haley's situation is quite similar to the one in the movie besides the fact that she is not moving but her parents are divorced as well and she lives with her mom. And then we have Aquamarine who is quite different from the one that we know and love from the movie. She's 16 in the book which I think might be the same as in the movie. She has long silver hair, shimmering blue nail polish that does not change with her mood, webbed fingers, um, a faint turquoise tint to her skin and her tail does not go away when she enters land and so she always has a tail which I'll talk more about later. She's also the youngest of I think seven sisters and they say that because of this she's really spoiled and she's just a very rude and not a very likable character. Oh she also cries fresh saltwater tears like a lot when she doesn't get her way she just like starts crying and it's this like whole thing which I found to be funny in comparison to like the movie where she cries for the first time and she's like what is this I'm leaking um, whereas in the book like no crying is definitely something that she does and it's very intense. <laughs> And then there's Raymond who I assume looks quite similar to how he does in the movie. Like he's described as being cute but he's also not like unattainably cute. Like obviously they're 12 so they're not trying to get with him but he's also not constantly being admired by other people. He works at the snack shop not as a lifeguard in this beach club in the book. It's very run down. It's about to be demolished by the end of the summer and so Haley and Claire are really the only guests visiting it and so they've kind of like become buds with Raymond. Like they say that they hang out sometimes and Raymond just kind of is chilling by himself at the snack shop all day. They say that he reads a lot. Like he goes through a bunch of books because like they don't have any customers and yeah I don't know. I liked him in the book. He seemed really chill. And there honestly isn't any other characters to really talk about from the book. Claire's grandfather plays a bigger role and I kind of saw him to be sort of like Leonard the janitor in the movie because they tell him about this mermaid and he's just like oh yes I've seen a few mermaids in my day and he was just like super chill. And then there was also this redheaded girl who was going to be moving into Claire's old house and they were both worried throughout the book that she was going to replace Claire. But then by the end of the book they come to the conclusion that like it's all right for them to have other friends and they're gonna need to make other friends once they're separated from one another. And then all the other characters that exist in the movie are just movie only so mainly Cecilia and her friends just don't even exist in the book and the book really only focuses on the main four of them which makes sense because they didn't really have time to explore any other characters or even develop the four that they had already and so that's all I have to say about the characters. So let's move on to the things that they changed and the things that they left out. 
So since I feel like everything in the book was changed for the movie, I'm just gonna go over the main plot points in the book and talk about how they were similar or different to what happened in the movie. So first of all, the beach club, like I said, it was very run down in the book and was about to be demolished by the end of the summer. And so it wasn't like popping like it was in the movie. And also Claire's grandparents didn't own it like they do in the movie. They just went there every day because they like to hang out there. But moving on to when they see Aquamarine for the first time in the movie, Claire falls into the pool. She sees something, but she doesn't know what it is. In the book, Haley dives into the pool just like for fun and because she's a good diver I don't know it was weird um and then she sees aquamarine and knows right away that she's a mermaid and tells Claire and Claire just believes her right away something I found interesting was near the end of the book they're having this like farewell party for the club and there's this little boy like walking around the pool and then because of the uneven tiles he falls into the pool and then is saved by aquamarine and Raymond so it was kind of similar to the scene in the movie with Claire except for it was later on in the book oh also there's like moon jellies in the pool which they just kept pointing out and I thought that that sounded really cool I also feel like I should mention that the pool doesn't get drained right away like it does in the movie like in the book the club's already being demolished and so they don't really care that the pool is full of like seawater and stuff since they're already getting rid of the place anyways and so that's just where aqua chills throughout the book so just like in the movie the girls decide that they want to try and meet up with the mermaid but because claire doesn't live there and they're 12 years old they don't do it in the middle of the night like they do in the movie but instead the next morning they come they bring actual fish like not just fish sticks um i think that it's herring in a jar and try to lure her with that there's no gummy worms involved like there is in the movie basically aqua Marine comes up, gets mad at them for a bit, and then talks about how she wants to meet Raymond because he was the first human that she saw and she just like fell in love with him on the spot. So Haley and Claire have already done some mermaid research at this point. So they found this one book that says mermaids can only last without salt water for seven days. And so they take this as fact, which I guess is okay because it does end up being fact. And so they agree to help Aquamarine get this date with Raymond as long as she agrees to go back to the ocean afterwards so that she doesn't shrivel up and die. Oh, and then also throughout all of this, apparently Aquamarine's like six sisters are like off in the ocean singing a song to her to try to get her to come back because they think that their sister is just dying which I'm not sure if like everyone could hear this song or just aquamarine but either way it's a thing <laughs> so that brings us to their date which is um a bit difficult for aquamarine because as I said her tail doesn't just disappear she has her tail even when she's out of water and so Claire and Haley come up with this idea to put her in a wheelchair to hide her tail and yep that's what they do and she just goes to the date which I guess makes it sound really easy but the thing that really gets me is just the fact that aquamarine is like slowly dying throughout her date when they move her chair at the end of it there's like scales piled up underneath because apparently her fin is just like shedding because she's like slowly deteriorating and so that just makes the whole like date itself seem like a bit dark in my opinion but I guess it goes well I would say it's kind of similar to the one dinner date they have in the movie except for the fact that they don't dance because she's trying to hide her fin and yeah we don't really hear much about their date it's kind of glossed over a little bit but they both seem to have a good time Raymond gets really confused as to like why they can't stay in touch because he's like I'm going off to college too it's okay like we can still like write or something but then she ends up giving him a shell and says that no matter where they are he can use it to talk to her and he's like really confused by this but he wears it as a necklace anyways I will say that the night before their date reminded me of the one scene after one of their dates in the movie where they're both watching the fireworks from the different locations and it like shows that they're still connected even though they're apart because in the book before their date the narrator describes Raymond dreaming of high tides and ocean stuff and aquamarine is like in the pool braiding her hair and the moon jellyfish are glowing and so it's like they're connected even though they're apart which I thought was really cute because that scene in the movie where they're both watching the fireworks is like one of my favorite ones in the movie overall and so it was nice that there was something that was sort of similar in the book oh and then Raymond does find out that aquamarine is a mermaid in the book as well obviously I think I mentioned this earlier but they both saved this kid who fell in the pool together and then that's when he realizes that she is a mermaid and then he doesn't really seem phased by it but it's in like the middle of this party aquamarine is like really like dying like she really needs to get back to the ocean and so Raymond's just kind of like I'll distract everybody you get aqua to the water and so that's what happens they rush her down the beach with like people yelling at them saying don't run down the beach because I don't know there's like bulldozers everywhere to like demolish the place but then they get her to the shoreline and there's apparently this wall in front of the shoreline for some reason I didn't really understand why that was but then they get her over the wall and into the water and it was a little bit weird because they kept having to like swim further deeper down into the ocean which I was like kind of confused by I thought that they would just like throw aquamarine over the wall and it was like she's good but no they have to bring her further and further deeper into the water and then she disappears but not before she gives Haley and Claire shells as well so they can communicate with each other no matter the distance and so yeah that's basically the book it does end with Claire later on in Florida like swimming in the ocean and she sees Raymond swimming because I guess he goes to college in Florida and then she's just like oh I'm sorry things didn't work out with you and Aquamarine he's like nope it did it's we're great and then she's like what and she sees them off like swimming together and so I guess Raymond's like not phased by the fact that he's dating a fish which I guess is cool 
So yeah, all the other main things that happened in the movie are movie only. I basically just summarized the book for you because there really wasn't much to it. There was no having to prove that love exists. They really don't become very close friends with Aquamarine. There's also no like, help a mermaid, you get a wish. There's no water tower. There's no worrying about having to get back to the water before nightfall or having to worry about getting water on Aquamarine or else instant fin, like no, because she already has a fin. There's no other cool mermaid things like the talking starfish or the color changing nail polish. And like I said, Cecilia and her friends don't even exist in the book. So any plot lines with them are just completely out the window. And yeah, so basically all the good things about the movie, yeah, they're not in the book. <laughs> And so it's because of this that I would definitely say that this book is more of an inspiration to the movie than a full-on adaption. Like, if someone were to just hand me this book with, like, completely different names and just say, like, hey, it's kind of similar to that one movie, Aquamarine, I would be like, oh yeah, I can kind of see it, but, like, hardly. There's also moments when I was reading this book that I was, like, a little bit concerned that I was reading the wrong book. Like, I knew that I wasn't because all the character names were the same and there was those, like, really slight similarities, but, like, part of me was, like, what if I am reading the wrong book? Like that is how different they are. Overall, I'm not too sure if I would recommend it. Like obviously if you are curious, definitely check it out. It was a very quick read. It took me, like I said, about an hour to read. I feel like it's more of a short story than an actual novel. Like after I read it, I was like, maybe it's a series. And then I looked it up and it actually is. Alice Hoffman has this whole like water tale series. So there is two other books in the Aquamarine collection. Um, but the second one is about, I think another mermaid named Indigo. And then the third one is about the two of them together. And so I don't think it's got anything to do with the movie. So that's why I didn't read those ones as well but yeah like I said if you're curious I guess check it out but honestly after I finished reading it I just felt like it was dumb and a little bit of a waste of time like I'd rather just watch the movie that I love so much and it just kind of baffles me that this is what is like the inspiration behind like one of my favorite movies of all time just because I feel like it was so bleh you know? <laughs> Anyways guys, let me know down below if you've read Aquamarine or if you have seen the movie or if there are any other books that you would like me to compare to the movies. Let me know in the comments down below because apparently I'm not just doing decoms now, I'm doing all the books. <laughs> so yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see from me next. Anyways, Cater Tots, that's all I have to say for today. I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon.